for a gas pipeline flowing at 3.5 metric um, cubic meter per day, gas has received gravity of 0 0.6 and viscosity of 0 0.00419 plus. Calculate the friction factor and the transmission factor. Assuming a DN400 mm pipeline, 10 mm worth it means an internal roughness of 0 0.015 mm. The base temperature and base pressures are 15 degrees C and 101 kilopascal, respectively. If the flow is increased by 50%, what is the impact on the friction factor and the transmission? If the pipeline is 480 kilometers, what is the outlet pressure for an inlet pressure of 9000 kilopascal? No. Writing down the given but um, data. Now we just write down the given data. Now the given data have the flow rates which is 3.5 mega cubic meter per day. This is in standard now. We also have the gas gravity. 0 0.6 we have we have the viscosity to be 0 point. we have the viscosity to be 0 point 0 0 0.0001 and we have the outer diameter the 400 millimeter we have the wall thickness to be 10 millimeter we also have the internal roughness the 0 0.015 millimeter now the base temperature is 15 degrees C which is the same thing as 2 288 if you add 2732 this 15 to give you 288 then the base pressure is 101 kilopascal now we are asked to calculate the friction factor and the transmission factor <coughs> now let's calculate first let's calculate the internal diameter so the internal diameter is equal to the outer diameter minus 2 times t. This will give us 400 minus 2 times 10. This is 400 minus 20. This is 380 millimeter. So we are putting our d to be 380 millimeter. Now we will now use Solovich's white equation to calculate our friction factor. The Solovich factor, okay, now before we do that, we need to also know if it's a, a laminar flow or turbulent flow. For us to do that, we need to calculate our Reynolds number. So the Reynolds number is equal to 0 0.51 
that's a good thing, thirty four, so and the base pressure divided by the base temperature and that's gravity times the flow rate divided by the viscosity times the so we have zero point five one three three times the base ratio is fourteen point seven divided by the base temperature which is two two eight eight times gas gravity is zero point six times the flow rate is three point five times ten is plus six divided by zero four zero 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 one one nine times three eighty now let's use a calculator to calculate this so we have zero point five one three four times fourteen forty seven divided by two eight eight times zero point six times three point five exponential six divided by zero point zero 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 one one nine divided by three eighteen so we have we have what here yeah, one point two one one point two one seven okay one point two one seven times ten is four six one point two one seven times ten is four six this is the Reynolds number so since the Reynolds number is greater than four hundred so it is a turbulent flow so since it's double so well, we're going to use make use of the color bricks white equation. Now we have calculated this. So I need to write it down somewhere so that I will keep on referencing that Reynolds number because we're going to be using that. We have one point two one. Seven times ten is four six. That's our Reynolds number. Mm, now let's so now let's now apply the Colibri wise equation to apply that we say one. All over the square root of f is equal to minus two log ten log log e all over three point seven b plus three point five one all over Reynolds number square root of f. Base ten, so that is it. So now let's now assume. So assume f is equal to zero point zero one. Now we now solve for f. From this equation up here, we substitute the value of f in the right hand side. And so for the value of f in the right hand side. So now we'll do that's what we'll do now. So minus two. So this is the what we call the integration method because f the function of f is an implicit function. So we'll say minus two log ten log base ten e is. E is equal to 
divide by 3.7 times 380 plus 2.51 divided by the unit number which is 1.217 times 10 raised to power 6 times the square root of 0 0.01 Now let's calculate the whole of this. This is our calculator. We calculate the whole of that. Now to do to calculate the whole of this, we have we have zero point zero one five divided by 3.7 divided by 380 plus 2.51 divided by 1.217 exponential 6 divided by by the square root so the new square root so we just say divide by 0 0.01 raised to power 0 0.5 the same thing as the square root so this is equal to what okay, so this is what we get the value inside that is what we get so now we see now log of this value Give us this. So multiply it by minus two, two times two minus equals one. So that is what we get. So, so this is what we get. So now we have gotten the whole of it. So now if we inverse it, we will not get the square root of. So let's inverse it. If we inverse that, so we'll just click, click the inverse value. We have this. Now to get our f, we see it's square both sides. The square both sides will have our f. So square both sides are really the square. So we have now 0 0.0123. 0 0.01. Two, three, two, zero, seven. So now let me write it down because that's what we are going to be using here. We have zero f to be equal to zero point zero. One two three two zero seven four. So this implies that F is equal to zero point zero one two three. Zero seven four. Now that means we are going to assume that F now is equal to zero point zero one two three two zero seven four. So that is the value we're going to use in this in the next calculation, this iteration. So we now say 1 all over the square root of f is equal to minus 2 log base 10 bracket open 0 0.015 divided by 3.7 times 380 plus 2.51 divided by 1.217 
times 7 times 10 raised to the power 6 times the square root of 0 0.01 Two three two zero seven four. Now, f will not equal to what? Now let's use our calculator to do this. Um, mm -hmm. In the calculator, we have zero point zero one five divided by three eighty. Divide by 3.7 plus 2.15 divided by 1.217 exponential 6 divided by 0 0.0512 then two zero seven four ways to four zero point five equal to go to this then now flip the log base times two my times minus two you have this now calculate the inverse of this we now square we get our f we square we have this so let's write down the next value of f so this is the next value of f we have 0 0.0 121 6 1 8 4 one two three one eight four let me see two one one two one six one eight four okay now let's write it down here so we have zero point zero one two one six one eight four now let's now also assume that f is equal to zero point zero one two one six one eight four now one over the square root of f will not be equal to minus two log this step bracket we from zero point zero one five divided by zero point seven times ten raised to four times three eighty plus two point five one divided by 1.217 times 10 raised to power 6 the square root of 0.0121 so it implies that our f will not be equal to what so we now solve for the value of this so to do that let's now also invoke our calculator So we have 0 0.15 divided by 3.7 divided by 3.18 plus, plus 2.51 divided by 1.217 exponential 6 divide by 0 0.0 0 1 exponential 0 0.5 
So we hold up this mistake. So now we start saying log of that is minus 3.9. Now we multiply by minus 2. We have this. We now calculate the inverse of this. Calculate the inverse, which will click the inverse function. We now square. Now we have 0 0.016. Oh, well, you just let me reconfirm this. Okay, why? So, let me just write down the value first before I reconfirm. So, we have n is equal to 0 0.0164. One eight four. And this is a lot of difference. So now let me just write it down here. We have zero point zero. One six four two one eight four. Now what? Hmm. Reconfirm from the beginning. Maybe there is a wrong calculation somewhere. Let me calculate so from this beginning. You have zero point zero one five divided by. 3.7 divided by 380 plus 2.51 divided by 1.717 exponential 6 divided by 0 0.01 raised to power 0 0.5 log times minus two inverse square mm, still correct mm -hmm. now why why would you will it now change from here from here to this value is too much let me check this other one. Zero point zero point zero one five divided by three point seven divided by three eighty plus two point five one divided by one point Exponential six divided by zero point zero one two three four zero seven point raised to four zero point five dot this log this times times minus two times minus two now inverse the square still correct why 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 the change here why does it change? Let me do, redo this thing. This is where the mistake is coming from. Let me now redo it. 0 0.015 divided by 3.7 divided by 380 plus 2.51 divided by 
divided by 1.217 exponential 6 divided by 0 0.0 1, 2, 1, 6, 1, 8, 4, raised to power 0.5. That is it now. And then we now say log. And then we say times minus 2. We have this. See, inverse this then square uh -huh. now now we come it's better now it's better than this yeah uh -huh. that is that's good now uh -huh. it's more like it let me just now copy down this so that means this third line is wrong so more like it so we have 0 0.01 Two one seven one four six five. So I will just clean this. I'll just zoom clean. Zoom clean this is not correct. Yeah, that's good now. This is one two one seven. One two one seven one four six five. Now let's now assume. F is equal to zero point zero one two one seven one four six five. Now so one all over F will now be equal to minus two log this ten zero point back into point zero point zero one five divided by 3.7 divided by 380 plus 2.51 divided by 1.2127 times 10 raised to power 6 square root of this 0 0.0 1217 one four six five. So it implies that our F now will not be equal to what? Now let's go to our calculator. So from our calculator. We have zero point zero one five divided by three point seven divided by three eighty plus plus two point five one divided by divided by one point two one seven exponential six divided by 0 0.0121711465 raised to power 0 0.5 equal to go to this then log then times minus 2 Then inverse of that, then square. So 
that means the final answer to this so this is the final answer let me write it down so this one is closer so we we'll have f to the 0 0.0121 0 0.0127 so when we look at it now now if you look from here see these are the same up up to here uh, look at here this is the same with this from here just if you because make this this one out would be seven one so it's the same here now so but we needed to stop here so the it will stop here so we look at it also critically you see that the final value the final value of our f will just be 0 0.0122 so this is the final value this is the final value so we've gotten our f so to get our which is the friction factor to get our transmission factor we say it's 2 divided by the square root of f so 2 divided by the square root of 0 0.0122 we have what now let's go back to calculator now we're going to we make use of our calculator we have 2 divided by the square root of the square is okay 2 divided by 0 0.0122 we raise to power 0 0.5 is something like the square root so the both words so it's 18.11 so our final value is 18.11 so let's write it down 18.11 so this is our final value for transmission now we are going to end it here we are going to end here end it here this is the first section of this particular problem now the next class part two we're going to solve for the friction factor and the the transmission factor to now see the difference when the flow rate is increased by 50 percent now that is what we're going to do in the next in part two of this particular problem so now we'll stop here and now we'll see to part two of this the same problem thank you for watching have a nice day